The energy conversions that take place inside a fossil fuel plant change the energy stored in coal, oil, or natural gas into electricity. The term fossil fuel refers to the fact that the sources of the fuels are the fossilized remains of plants and animals. Most of the energy conversions take place in three main components. These components are the boiler, the steam turbine, and the generator. In a typical fossil fuel plant boiler, the tubes that form the walls of the boiler are filled with water that is under pressure. Fuel is fed into the boiler where it is ignited and burned. As the fuel burns, it releases thermal energy, which is absorbed by the water in the tubes. As the water absorbs the thermal energy, its temperature increases and it begins to boil. The boiling water changes into steam, which is heated even more and then routed out of the boiler and sent to the turbine. So, in the boiler, the energy in fuel is converted into thermal energy, and then the thermal energy goes into the steam that flows out of the boiler. Inside the turbine are two kinds of blades. The blades that are attached to the casing are called stationary blades. The blades that are attached to the turbine shaft are called moving blades. When the steam strikes the blades that are attached to the shaft, it causes them to move, which makes the shaft rotate. In the process, some of the energy in the steam is converted into mechanical energy in the turbine. Since the turbine shaft is connected to the generator, this mechanical energy is transferred to the generator. In the generator, the mechanical energy is converted into electricity. The steam that passes through the turbine next enters the condenser. In the condenser, additional energy is removed from the low-pressure, low-temperature steam to cool it and convert it back into water. The water is then pumped through a series of heaters and back to the boiler, where it's used again to produce more steam. The entire steam and water loop from the boiler, through the turbine, into the condenser, and back to the boiler is called the steam cycle. Like all power plants, fossil fuel plants have advantages and disadvantages. One of their biggest disadvantages is that fossil fuels are expensive, and companies that operate fossil fuel plants have to keep buying fuel. Another disadvantage of fossil fuel plants is that the exhaust gases produced by burning fuel often contain harmful substances that must be removed before the gases can be released to the environment. Removing these substances can be costly, and it can affect the efficiency of the plant. On the other hand, fossil fuel plants have many advantages. For example, unlike hydroelectric plants, Fossil fuel plants aren't required to be located only where a dam can be built. The fuel for most gas turbines is either oil or gas. Gas turbine plants can also be called combustion turbine plants, since the turbine uses gases that are created as a result of combustion. A gas turbine unit uses a series of energy conversions to change the energy stored in its fuel into electricity. Most of the energy conversions take place in the three major components of the unit. These components are the combustor, the turbine, and the generator. The three components are usually assembled as a single machine. Air is drawn into a gas turbine by a compressor. In the compressor, the pressure of the air is increased so that it can be forced into the combustor. Inside the combustor, the compressed air is mixed with fuel and the mixture is ignited and burned. The burning creates gases that expand rapidly. The energy that is released from the burning fuel is converted into energy in the expanding gases. The gases flow from the combustor into the turbine. In the turbine, the hot gases flow between the blades, where some of the energy in the gases is transferred to the blades. This energy transfer causes the rotor to which the blades are attached to spin, which produces mechanical energy. Since the turbine and the generator are connected, the mechanical energy of the turbine is transferred to the generator, which produces electricity. One major advantage of a gas turbine plant is that the plant can go from a complete shutdown to a full load condition in a matter of minutes. Another advantage that many gas turbine units have is that all of the components are assembled together by the manufacturer. This means that after a gas turbine unit is purchased and delivered, only a small amount of work is required to put it in service. 
Gas turbine units also have some disadvantages. For instance, many of them are very loud when they're operating, and this may limit the locations where they can be installed. Another disadvantage is that they may be less efficient than fossil fuel plants. The gases that are exhausted from the unit are very hot, and they may still contain a lot of energy. One way that this disadvantage can be overcome is to make the gas turbine unit part of what is called a combined cycle plant. In a combined cycle plant, the exhaust gases from a gas turbine are used to produce steam to drive a steam turbine. The hot exhaust gases that leave the gas turbine are routed to a heat recovery steam generator, or HRSG. In the HRSG, the exhaust gases transfer heat to water to produce steam. The steam that's produced is sent to the steam turbine, where some of the energy in the steam is converted into mechanical energy. The mechanical energy is then converted into electricity by a second generator. This increases the efficiency of the plant, since more of the energy in the gas turbine exhaust gases is used before the gases are released. Hydroelectric plants are some of the simplest power plants available. They use falling water to operate. A dam stores the water that a hydroelectric plant uses to produce electricity. The dam has controls so that the amount of water that flows through the dam can be controlled. The water stored behind the dam has pressure due to the height of the water. This pressure is a form of stored energy. When the water is released by the dam, the pressure forces it through openings in the dam and through the power plant. As the water flows through the plant, it turns several water turbines. So as the water flows through the plant, the energy of the water is converted into the rotation of the water turbines. A water turbine consists of a series of blades or buckets mounted on a shaft. The shaft is directly connected to a generator. A hydroelectric plant may have several water turbines and generators. The force of the water flowing from the dam pushes against the blades, causing the blades and the shaft to rotate. This creates the mechanical energy that the generator converts into electrical energy. Like all other power plants, hydroelectric plants have advantages and disadvantages. One advantage of a hydroelectric plant is that its design is relatively simple. Also, the water that is used to drive the turbines doesn't have to be purchased. One of the disadvantages of hydroelectric plants is that they can only be built on rivers or lakes that can support a dam. Another disadvantage is that if there's a severe drought, the output from a hydroelectric plant may have to be reduced or the plant may have to be shut down. Of all the different types of power plants, nuclear power plants are probably the most complex. They're similar in design to many fossil fuel plants, but they use a different process to create the thermal energy that is converted into mechanical energy. This is a simplified illustration of one type of a nuclear plant. Its main components are a reactor, a steam generator, a turbine, a generator, and a condenser. The reactor contains the fuel that the plant uses. In most cases, the fuel is uranium. When this plant is operating, the uranium breaks down in a process called nuclear fission. The breakdown of uranium produces fragments of uranium, which can be called fission byproducts. As the fuel fissions, it produces energy that is converted into heat. This heat is transferred to water that is flowing through the reactor. The water is under high pressure so that it will not boil and change to steam in the reactor. When the lower pressure water receives heat, it boils and changes into steam. The steam that is produced in the steam generator is directed to the turbine. The turbine uses blades, both stationary blades and rotating blades, to produce mechanical energy. When the steam hits the rotating blades, it causes them to move, turning the turbine shaft. Some of the energy in the steam is thus converted into mechanical energy. Since the turbine is connected directly to the generator, the mechanical energy of the turbine is transferred to the generator where it's converted into electricity. The steam leaves the turbine and enters the condenser. In the condenser, more energy is removed from the steam, and it's converted back into water. The water is then pumped through a series of heaters and back to the steam generator, where it is boiled again to produce steam. As with all the other types of power plants, nuclear power plants have advantages and disadvantages.
For example, one advantage is that the fuel costs of a nuclear plant are less than those of a fossil fuel plant or a gas turbine. Also, a nuclear plant does not create the same forms of air pollution that burning coal or oil creates. Nuclear plants also have some disadvantages. Since they're more complex than other types of plants, they usually cost more to design and construct. Also, fission byproducts that are left over after the fission process are radioactive and require special storage facilities. In this topic, we've looked at how different types of power plants make the energy conversions that produce electricity. We examine typical fossil fuel plants, gas turbine plants, hydroelectric plants, and nuclear plants.